Hi, I'm Angie Monko, your energy healer and self-love coach for women going through loss and divorce. Have you lost someone who was your everything? Today we're going to be talking about bereavement and eight ways to cope after losing someone you love. Bereavement simply means losing someone or feeling the act of depri being deprived of losing someone that you loved very much, especially to death, losing them to death. And so today I'm going to talk about eight ways that I have coped through my journey of grief after losing my daughter Maddie four years ago when she was 22 years old from cystic fibrosis. These eight ways that I'm going to describe, um, seven of them talk about the different um, grieving models from uh, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and Colin Murray Parks. Number one is there is no right or wrong way to grieve. Um, everybody experiences grief in the stages that I'll be explaining in two through eight for various lengths of time. And the key point is that it's your timeline. There's no right or wrong way to grieve and there's no right or wrong amount of time to grieve. So the advice here is don't be pressured into anyone's timeline. Follow your own. And number two is shock and denial, one of the stages. Um, so whether a loss occurs suddenly or you have some advanced notice, it's possible to experience shock. You will feel emotionally numb and you may deny the loss. Uh, for months after Maddie died, I remember just shaking my head like, like I couldn't believe that she was gone. Um, so advice, be aware of this feeling of numbness, know that it's normal, and try not to resist it or think something is wrong with you. Number three is pain and guilt. Um, during this stage in grieving, the pain of the loss starts to set in, and you may also feel guilty for wanting or needing more from your friends and family. I felt a lot of guilt of not spending enough time with Maddie before she died, um, she told me a few months before that, Mommy, I'm not going to be around forever, you know. And these words really stuck with me. Um, and so my advice here is to process the feelings of guilt using emotional freedom techniques or tapping, which I'll have a link for that in the comments. Um, I'm pretty sure that our loved one wouldn't want us to feel guilty or believe that we didn't do enough for them. Number four is anger and bargaining. You may lash out at people um, that you love or become angry with yourself. Or you might try to strike a bargain with a higher power asking that the loss be taken away in exchange for something on your part. More on that in the next video. With bargaining, my main experience was before Maddie died and she was on life support and I was rallying with pastors and spiritual healers to pray for her and to bless her and do these healings. And uh, then I realized it was just her time. She was ready to go. Anger didn't really occur until after she had died, and it was mostly directed at people who didn't know how to treat me after her death. My advice here is anger is a signal to do something different, but we don't want to have a prolonged anger because that will affect our health and our mental state. Number five is depression and loneliness. Um, as you reflect on your loss, you may start to feel depressed. Um, it's because you're really seeing the reality start to set in that this is permanent. Um, when we feel powerless over changing our circumstances, we can feel depressed, hopeless, and frustrated with our lives. After something like this happens, we can start to feel like, why is this happening to me? I'm a good person. But the truth is that life is not fair. Um, I didn't become depressed after Maddie died because I was bestowed with so much love afterwards that I just remember feeling alive and thinking love comes from wherever it needs to come from. Um, Maddie's not the only source of love. Um, and even though Maddie and I aren't here to love each other in physical form, our love for each other extends beyond physical and crosses over that plane. So my advice is decide if it's time to look at things in a new light, such as life is happening and it's not against me. Life and death are part of reality, which I can't change. I choose to move on with my loved one in my heart. I am not powerless. And then number six is the upward turn. You begin to adjust to your new life and the intensity of the pain you feel from the loss starts to reduce. So six is the upward turn. And with that, I just remember for me, 
Um, you know, I did start to feel more calm, but it took about six months. For the first six months, when people would ask how I was doing, there was no way that I was going to say I was good because that would be a betrayal of Maddie. And so I just said I was okay. Um, but I did start to feel some relief after that. So your mind and heart will adjust um, to the new experience of life without your loved one. Advice, rest assured that hope will return. Be very, very patient with yourself. Number seven is reconstruction and working through. So this stage in grieving involves taking action to move forward. Um, for me, I hired a medium. This really, really, really helped me so much to communicate with her in this way. And uh, if it aligns with your spiritual beliefs, I advise you to hire a medium to communicate with your loved one. Um, KatherineHughes.net. And number eight, acceptance and hope. It's at this final stage of the grieving process that you begin to accept that your loved one is gone and you have hope for tomorrow, what that might bring. For me, I found that working with a medium, Catherine, really helped me. And though Maddie's no longer here, we are still very much connected. And I came up with a belief that instead of moving forward, I said, I will move forward with Maddie as my angel guide. I honor her every day that I am well and that I help other people. So my advice is to find a belief system that works for you and uplifts your heart. When trying on a new belief, try not to get wrapped up in being able to prove your beliefs are true. Does that really matter? Um, so I'm here to support you. I have a Heal Your Heart retreat coming up. Check out comments for that link and as well as a quote from Healing After a Loss um, by Martha Hickman that is very inspiring. Here's a quote from Healing After Loss, October 5th, by Martha Hickman. I sit on the rich, moist earth, green earth, and draw my knees to my chest. All is not lost. The birds have simply moved on. They give me courage to do the same, by Terry Tempest Williams. At this time of year in some parts of our country, we begin to see the birds fly south for a long season. How do they know? How will they know to come back? The answers are out of our hands. The processes of life go on, irrespective of our knowledge or ignorance. How reassuring that we don't need to know that the creator who set the globes of the solar system spinning does know, and the birds do come back. Can we extend the same trust to our experience of loss and renewal? Can we watch birds go in the expectation of their return? Can we say goodbye to our loved ones, not in the expectation that they'll come flying back in the spring, but that in ways we can't know, they will continue to be present with us continue to love us as we continue to love them.